Hello everyone. In this lab, we are going to learn public key infrastructure. Here we know public key infrastructure is a set of protocols, algorithms, and lots of stuff. We use to generate digital certificate request and assign digital certificate request. Receive a digital certificate, verify our digital certificate. We use our digital certificate to certify websites or client computers. So here we will use the digital certificate to certify your personal website. You have your first name, your last name, dot at s350.edu. For example, uh, BillClinton.ids.350.edu. Uh, uh, in your certificate signing request, the common name should be your first name, your last name, followed by .s350.edu. And uh, we will use this uh, digital certificate to certify this uh, domain name or the website name. The first task, we are going to obtain a digital certificate. There are several steps. Step one, generate public private key pair. You can follow these commands. Right now I will create a folder to hold all the documents will be created today. So it's a uh, lab 08. So I press uh, Ctrl L and copy this uh, address. I would like to use a uh, terminator. So inside a terminator, CD to the folder I created today. Currently, uh, nothing inside. Okay, now I will follow those commands to complete task one. Yeah, in task one, generate private key, then generate uh, public key, and check the actual contents of these two keys. Open SSL, we use Gen or SA output. So you need to put your first name and your last name. For example, beer Clinton dot prior the private key to zero for eight bits for this uh, private key. Right, it's done. Then we use a uh, open SSL or SA to uh, generate public key from the public key. Dash pop out dash out Clinton dot pop. Now we have public key or public key. Modify the contents with open SSL or SA input the public key dash text dash not. And you see this the public key for beer Clinton. You can see all the components. To the for eight bit and modulus and uh, private exponent, public exponent, and so on. We also need to verify the contents of the public key. Dash pub in, dash text, dash no out. So I mean, you see this uh, exponent is a public exponent with this uh, modulus and you see public key. So this is uh, step one. And step two, we want to generate a 
certificate signing request. And CSR, this CSR includes your public key and it will be sent to the certification authority and the CA will generate a certificate for your public key. Usually after ensuring that your identity, your identity information in the CSR matches with the website's true identity or the FQDN fully qualified domain name. So please fill the following information in your certificate signing request. The email, use your PNW email. How do we generate the sign request? We use this uh, command, open SSL request, dash new, specify your private key, and dash out the signing request. Open SSL dash new uh, request, sign request, as near dash key with the private key dash out the signing request here from then dot csr we wonder why we put a private key here we want to know the csr use our public key yes it is but the, we know the public key is a container in the private key so it will be extracted by this uh, open SSL or EQ command. So now let's uh, fill with all the uh, informations. Yeah, you need to change it to your name, first name, last name. So when price vendor, it will ask me to input all this information. Yeah, your common name. This is one your common name. Yeah, dot s three fifty dot edu and uh, oops, I make mistake. This country name, my common name is a country name. My bad. I, I need to do it again. I just type a uh, C to stop it and I run it again. Yeah, the first one is a uh, country name, country name, just two letter code, so COS for this uh, table. So what is uh, exactly as this output in the console window. And a state of uh, Indiana and a local name, the yeah, local name, rest of your and the organization name is uh, Purdue University Northwest. Northwest. And the organization unit name OU is at a Westville campus. Then your common name, this is the most important information. Here, clinton.its350.edu. Then your email address. Please use your GNW address. Okay, uh, challenge password. We don't set a challenge password. In, the, in your real application, you may need to set a challenge password to protect your information here. Just press enter, press enter to skip this information. Okay, now you can use the LS to see you we created a certificate signing request. 
we can use command to see its uh, contents. For example, you can use a uh, kept to see its contents. CSR. Let me see the end certificate request. And here is a uh, begin certificate request. You may uh, search on Google to see which command you can see the components inside your CSR certificate signing request. Now the next step, I need to send my sum request to the certificate authority to sign my request and then send me back the digital certificate. So we need to, uh, in this lab, we act as the requester, we also act as the CA. So we need to download this file and uh, to sign our request. So we can read this uh, carefully. Okay, this is a file downloaded. Save it. Oops, it's inside my download folder. I need to, need to copy to my calendar folder. Open your new tab, this is download. Now you see that uh, title is there, control X, opt, control V, paste here. Then you extract here. Could not open this uh, file type, type is a uh, 7z. So what could we do? We need to install uh, 7z. So here you type 7z. Let's see uh, the command we need to install it. So do apt install this is for Okay, now we will be able to extract here. So we get a PTI for the CA, the certificate for solidity is the customer. The customer asks the CA to sign the CSR file to generate a digital certificate. Here we use this uh, command. Now we work at the CA before that. You know, copy our CSR file into the folder PKICA request, then it into the CA folder to run this command to generate the certificate. This is a copy process, just mimic the process you email your CSR to a CA. So I copy this uh, CSR to the PKI folder. CA request. Okay, it's a copy there, then CD into the CA folder, PKI, CA. Okay, you type LS, you see now we are inside the CA folder, the certificate authority folder. We run this command to turn the signing request into a digital certificate after we sign it. Yeah, let's open SSL, CA cert with our CA.CRT. And the key file is CA.key. This is the base private key. We have a config file, open SSL conf. And the input is the request here, Clinton.csr. You need to change this one to your name. The first name, the last name, and output. We save all the digital certificates inside this CRTS folder with your first name, your last name, 
ียกเงินทำก็ C audit, C audit in the certificate, C S O, the certificate signing request. So you need to enter the passphrase protect this private key, the C S private key. The password is this one, password. Okay, now you need to verify whether this is information or valid or not. It will work for CA. So you need to check your customer's information here. Signature, certificate, details, and so on. Okay, now we type uh, yes. You may verify the user identity information, the subject information. If you have error, you cannot generate the digital certificate. You need to verify the information you put here, whether you have some uh, typos. Here you see the 100 years. Just uh, this notable three hundred sixty five days is one year with two zeros, so one hundred years is to be certified until this time. This is problem. It's okay now. It's a uh, one out of one certificate requests certified, committed. Yes. Uh, you see the database is uh, updated and uh, a new entry is generated in our CRTS CT CRTS. You see, we generated that uh, digital certificate. Now we have two files. So this, this is what we generated. So this is an uh, example is generated before. So I just forgot, deleted it. So now uh, the CA generates this digital certificate. We just copy to mimic the send back to the customer, send the digital certificate to the, back to the customer and copy this. Before we copy it, we need to, uh, let's see, copy this CA.CRT from this one to this place. We need to copy these two files to the same folder as your private private keys. So you, we need to see the back to the folder contains your uh, private key. Here you have zero eight contains our private key, right? Your content to a file. Now we need to copy that K I C A and uh, CA dot CRT. This is the digital certificate, self signed digital certificate of the CA. You also to verify any digital certificate issued by the CA, for example, yours. We copy it here, and we also need to copy this CA search. No, so there is a type of CRTS. CRTS, not a search. So this is your digital certificate. So now you have your digital certificate here. Your content dot CRT issued by the CA with this uh, CA dot CRT. Then the CA is a digital certificate can be used to verify the digital certificate issued by the CA. For example, verify yours. Open SSL. Verify CA file. CA.CLT. We with the CA file to verify any digital certificate issued by the CA. 
and you'll see it says uh, verified okay, which means it's a is a digital certificate issued by CA and uh, is signature signed by the CA is okay, is good. So we completed uh, task one. Generate a pair of private key and public keys, then generate a certificate sign a request and send to the CA and the CA will sign that uh, send a request to generate a digital certificate then send it back to us. The CA also need to send their digital certificate together with the di your digital certificate. So you can use the CA's digital certificate to verify your digital certificate issued by the CA. And now for uh, task two, we use this digital certificate to certify uh, HTTPS web server and we have put uh, for qualified, fully qualified domain name inside our assignment request, right? So here task two, we will explore how public key certificates are used by websites to secure website browser communication. And uh, we will set up an HTTPS website using the OpenSSL's built-in web server. So this is a simple test. First, we need to configure DNS. Choose this uh, FQDN, your first name, your last name, your address, your favorite ID, and which in your certificate as name, as, uh, as the name of your website. So to get your virtual machine to recognize this name, we need to uh, add the following entry or line to the end of this etc host file. Yeah, we need to add this line to this file. Oops, we add this line. This is a command to open that uh, uh, host file. Here we use a uh, sudo sub l etc, we use sub l to open this host file. Inside the host file, we may put a line at the end, 127.0.1, followed by your fully qualified domain name. Yes, three fifty dot video. Connect, we save it. So this uh, website will be certified by your digital certificate. Next, we will configure the web server. We launch a simple web server with a certificate. It allows us to start a simple web server using this uh, ace server command. So first, we need to combine, combine our SQL key and our certificate into one file. So here is uh, the command call key. A private key and uh, we just uh, renamed right? self.pam. So we copy our private key into this self.pam. Then we will append our digital certificate CRT append to the end of this server.pam. Uh, and you can see the contents of this server.pam, it contains your private key and your certificate. We can uh, launch the web server certified by this server.pam. 
basically this is open SSL S underscore server. We specify the certificate server.pm and we use accept 443, the default uh, HTTPS port number dash uh, www. Here you can check it by default the server will listen on this port number, which is not the default HTTPS port number. So we order that using this dash accept 443 option. When we run it, the server is uh, Here it says uh, permission denied. So we need to check the problem here. It says the parent permission denied. So what the problem uh, happened here? Cache for overflows. Okay, in this case, it's very likely may for three by other web source. So let's uh, change this number to another number. For example, uh, use a four four three three. Okay, now you see a uh, it's a uh, running. Then we can access it. Uh, okay, four four three three is uh, good. Now we can browse this web website secure with the HTTPS. So post here HTTPS. Your first name, your last name. Dot ITS. 350.io, but this time we need to specify the port number 433 because uh, the default 433 is uh, used by the system. Here you see uh, your connection is not secure. The owner of this uh, Bill Clinton.ids 350.io has configured their website improperly. The problem why we have this problem. The problem is we didn't install the CAS certificate into our Firefox. You can go through this way. Right? We see the uh, message. The certificate is not trusted because the issuer certificate is unknown. You can check this anymore. It's not inside. No more. You can check this advanced to see the problem. It says the user invalid the security certificate. Why is it invalid? Because uh, Fox cannot validate it's a valid or not without the certificate. During the lecture, we know Firefox is pre-installed and also CAS uh, digital certificate, but uh, ours is not installed. So we can read this uh, step three. So we need to uh, set in the browser to accept our CAS kit. Then any uh, digital certificate issued by our CAS can be worked by Firefox automatically. So you need to read these three uh, paragraphs carefully. You might want to install CA.CLT on the CW virtual machine following how to install, how do I install a root certificate with an except here. It's not a uh, recommended. Now we know how to find those uh, pre-installed certificate. Right? We type uh, search, here's the certificate. We have the certificates. 
Now we want to install ours on Solidity. So we import, import our lab eight, our CA's digital certificate, CA.CRD. Click open. Now we use this CA, what we, we want to, we want to trust the CA to identify websites or to trust the CA to identify email users. And you can also view the contents to examine the CA certificate. Here you see uh, this is our CA certificate. Okay, it looks good. Now click OK. Okay, this time is uh, in Important, you can scroll this one to find RCA dish certificate. It is start from P, right? It's going and what's the uh, Northwest? Is this one? This is digital certificate. You can view its uh, contents. It's a self signed uh, digital certificate issued by issued to the same. So it's a self signed digital certificate. Here you can check this uh, what is components of this digital certificate. Uh, close it. Okay. Okay. Now, our Firefox has that uh, CA digital certificate. You can refresh this one. Now you see the turn screen because it's uh, verified by that. Of CA's digital certificate. So it's a valid. These are the contents generated by the S server command. You can see the ciphers supported in this S server binary. These are the ciphers supported a long list. So you can check all this stuff. No client certificates certificate available. Here we, we have this certificate is used only to certify the server, but uh, there is no client certificate to certify the browser. So here we work on the same machine, on the real world. A client certificate means uh, the certificate from your browser. And uh, this certificate is for the server, certify the server. And uh, you see the turn green and secure connection. Is a valid by Purdue by University in Northwest. And you see the accept, accept, it accepts connection from this browser to the server. The server is uh, running as this uh, command. Okay, we complete this part, this uh, observation and explanation. Now we have four subtasks. Here, pay attention to this SSL session on the web page and compare it with the manual steps you have done in lab zero file. In lab zero file, we use a AC metric key to do key change. So this to exchange C metric key. And this is a similar. It uses uh, the asymmetrical cipher. And the key is inside the digital certificate, right? In our certificate for the server, we have private key and the digital certificate contains public key. When you check the steps here, you see uh, we need to check this session. This is an automatic session uh, set up. In lab zero file, we set up a session manually. In this session, you see the cipher is this one, and the session protocol TLS v1.2, the cipher is this one, ECDHDOSA, the symmetric cipher, asymmetric cipher, the block cipher opening mode, and uh, Hash the hash algorithm we used to guarantee the integrity of the communication. Here is the key, the chain access 
Subtask uh, 3. How is your digital certificate verified automatically by the It's uh, verified automatically by the uh, CA's digital certificate we installed in our Firefox. And we call digital certificate for this uh, server. You can see uh, it's a uh, Wildfire for this is CA. And it will find the issuer from our digital certificate. Issuer is this uh, yeah, issuer by this CA. That we check and find the CA from our digital certificate. Then it will go through the certificate in the installed. Install the CA list and find our digital certificate and use that. Use our CA digital certificate to verify whether this uh, digital certificate is uh, what not. The so user is the only to verify that a signature. The signature signed by the the CA. Here is the signature. And that green echo means that the verification is okay. Yeah, this is a green locker. So this is how is digital certificate verified on my browser. It will find the issuer of your digital certificate, then check whether the issuer is inside it's a pre-installed uh, digital certificate and use the CS digital certificate. Use the uh, found CS digital certificate to, to verify whether your digital certificate is issued by the CA. The last uh, subtask, your first name, last name, address, refer to the digital points to the blog post. It so means if it was one instead, uh, we will be connected to the same web server. So we can try it 
but this one maybe pointed to a default website. Actually, we have a web server running in our virtual machine. It's a server by a patch. Our host, now you see a, a pattern in a default configuration. HTTPS is not enabled. Our port number is a 4433, so we need to supply the port number. Otherwise, it looks for the default port number 443, which is not a listened by our command line server. So now you see it says your connection is not secure. So this is why. Why is not secure? This one is secure. They're the same website. How do we know it's the same website? I will launch and accept it here. You can check the problem. It says the certificate is not verified for the name localhost. This is the reason. Because this localhost, this name is not uh, certified by our uh, this certificate, our digital is used to certify this FODN. All right. So that's why uh, it says it's not valid because it's not certified. Okay, advanced, we can add exception to go ahead and confirm. Actually here, we can see the certificate is our certificate. Okay, get the certificate. We'll build the, this is the certificate status. It says, this set attempts to identify itself with invalid information. And then run the site. Okay, you build it because this one is used to certify this coin, not that local host. Now if we confirm the security exception, we will come to the same website as, as this one. Right? Because it's served by our to the command line, we can say accept, accept this, accept it is uh generated for this connection. Here you see the same output, but you need to pay attention. Here, a new mask key is generated for each session, a different mask key will be generated. You can compare these two. Right, file for file. Here, CIF4 and so on. So now you see why this uh, name is so important. 